What could be better than dogs in cute sweaters? Maybe some of this. Shoot the fridge. Let's add some of that. That's the good stuff right there. Hello everyone! Today is another look back video on 2022, some of my favorite things, and I can't help but say it like it's being sung in a musical. My favorite things! Let's get started! My favorite planner should be no surprise if you've watched my previous video. This is the A5 Hobonichi Techo Cousin Avec. Now, this Avec basically meant that it split the year into two books each six months, January through June and July through December. I really like this because they do tend uh, for a lot of people to get a little chunkier and I didn't want the extra the extra chunk of having a whole year carried around. Also another reason that I really like having the split is that halfway through the year it is just fun to be able to have a clean, pristine, untouched planner. It's like a do-over. Uh, a new planner insert is so much fun to start. That was another advantage to me of having the year split into two books. And of course, you can't have a Hobonichi planner. I guess you could, but part of the fun of having a Hobonichi planner is having a Hobonichi cover. This is Today's Adventure, is what the cover is called. These guys are just adorable. Look at that. Look at those guys. So cute. This is me. This is me right there. Really enjoyed this combo last year. No matter what anyone tells you, there are really only two essential items that you need in order to plan or to journal. You need a notebook of some sort, and you need a writing implement. So we've covered the notebook. My favorite pen for planning last year was the Energel Klana. I've mentioned these before. These are my favorite writing implement, hands down. I've got a few favorite fountain pens. Those are a little more high maintenance. These guys are little workhorses. I prefer the finest point that they offer. These are the 0.3 they are a gel pen. These are filled with black gel pen ink. They require a little bit more drying time than other pens like a ballpoint. I knew the Uniball is a particular favorite among the Hobonichi planner crowd, but honestly, I never really had a lot of trouble with smudging. They just write so smoothly and consistently and they come in these fun, just fun little colors. I used these in black and this one is filled with red ink. Another one of my favorite writing implements, and I'm quite a collector of them, is the fountain pen. And this year I discovered one of my favorite fountain pens. The price range is very affordable. It's a great little writer. That was the Kuwaiko Student Fountain Pen called 70s Soul. And as you can see, it's a lovely kind of muted autumnal orange with the gold accents. It posts really well. It's a great weight for um, writing. Your hand, your grip does not tire out, but it is substantial enough. It feels heavier than your typical Kuwaiko Sport, maybe. There is a whole series of these uh, with different uh, cap colors. They come in blue and green and brown. Blue, green, brown, orange, and I'm forgetting one. Red. 
red, kind of a burgundy, like a soft red. It's very pretty. It is a lovely little pen and it will come up when we talk about my favorite fountain pen inks, which is next. Now we can talk about my favorite fountain pen inks. And I have one first place winner. It's tough for me, people. I love fountain pens. I love fountain pen inks. And it's like asking me to choose which is my favorite child. So I have picked out a favorite and three other runners up to show you today. My favorite is actually <laughs> in my favorite little fountain pen from this year. It is Diamine's Autumn Oak. It's got all the hints of autumn, just like it promises. Just to give you a better idea of the true color. There's a swatch of autumn oak. As you can tell coming out of that extra fine point, it's definitely darker and doesn't show as much as the orange variation. Here's another little swatch of it. That displays it a little bit better than my write, original writing sample. Now for the runners up. It is very much a muted tan sort of brown. It comes darker, of course, out of the extra fine nib. Here's a swatch of the Linen Toolbar Sesame Oil. Here's another swatch of it to give you an idea of what it looks like. Another favorite this year was the Sailor Ink Studios number 370. Very much like the pen cap here is a very pretty sagey kind of green color. There's a swatch of it. As you can see, it's kind of a soft, again, muted sage green. That looks very, very pretty for autumn and spring. There it is in my little swatch book. Last but not least is a shimmer ink by Colorverse called Witch by Starlight. It is a beautiful navy purple ink filled with silver glitter particles. Here is a swatch of it. Hopefully you can see some of those glitter particles in it if you'd like to have something with a little extra flair. Now I don't use this implement very often, but it is something that I carry around in my pencil bag, and that is an actual pencil. Now these are mechanical pencils by Sunstar, and it's called the Nicolo. Is it Nicolo or Nicolo? These are particularly handy because in a single pencil they have two leads. You can have a 0 0.3, and you turn it the other way, and it's a 0 0.5. They come with a nice, chunky eraser, which is sometimes a problem that I have with other mechanical pencils. The eraser that they include is very, very small and not worth it usually. They come in a lot of lovely colors. This is a cream kind of tan. I don't know if you can tell on camera that that's the color of that. And then I have this one in gray. And then I also have one in a very sunshiny yellow color. Another writing implement that was one of my favorites that I'm continuing, of course, all of these I'm continuing to use in 2023. Whether they remain on my favorites list at the end of the year remains to be seen. If you're in the planner community, who hasn't heard of the Mild Liner? 
highlighters. This was a newer pack. This is their neutral set of highlighters. Now, this might look different than the neutral set advertised on other websites, like JetPens has a different set by one highlighter. They did not include this copper color in the sets that they have of the same neutrals. They have the other ones, which come in a mild beige, mild cream, mild cool gray, and mild olive. The newer sets have instead this mild dusty pink. So I purchased from JetPin because they're very good about having individual uh, highlighters. If you just want to purchase one color, you do not have to buy the entire pack, which I really appreciate. I purchased just this separate dusty pink to include in this selection for the neutral set. They can smear that inner gel ink. That is a downside. So usually what I have to do is I highlight first and then right on top of it if I know ahead of time. Otherwise, I will pull it out to the side or highlight around an item to keep the smearing to a minimum because I'm not giving up my gel pens. The next category is for notebook. There really weren't, well, at least for me, any other contenders this year. And the hands down winner goes to the Midori MD Notebook Journal, A5 size, one day, one page in the dot grid. It has this handy feature where you can tear off the corner page once you finish the page. That way your finger goes straight to um, the unfinished pages so you know where to start. One of the downsides, a lot of people don't like this, particularly if they're using it as a journal, uh, a bullet journal, and let me tell you, these make fantastic bullet journals in my opinion, um, is the fact that you have to number your own pages, which can get kind of tedious once you reach, you know, the higher numbers that gets kind of old. It's very sturdy, even though I reinforced it with some packing tape uh, to make sure that held up, it would have held up without it. Now, for the category on binder and paper. Again, there were a couple of contenders. I mainly use binders to keep track of um, story ideas as I'm working through them. I dedicate a binder to that particular story and then I fill it with outlines and character sheets, names of places, maps, pictures of what I believe the characters are going to look like. And the winner in the binder category is the Merriman five chart binder in the B5. And I filled it with this paper. This is the Kokuyo B5 six millimeter ruled paper. They have a couple of different styles in this particular loose leaf paper. The Shikari, I hope I'm saying that right, the Shikari is the one that I prefer when I'm working because when I'm doing character sketches, when I'm outlining a story, I like to work in pencil sometimes. And it has a little bit more tooth to it than the other style in this particular brand. Um, so it's a little, has a little bit more texture. And I love the opportunity if I need to switch things around. Um, in my outline. This comes apart very easily and it's quite snug fit when you want to put it back together. You have all these lovely tabs where you can set up sections for characters. <laughs> this is what I, Bo Bridges, is <laughs> the look that I'm going for for one of my older characters. I've got the different sections set up here just for fun on my on an ongoing story that I'm working on called Wayfair, which I spelled wrong <laughs> at first. Jeez, so sad. At least I corrected it. 
this binder and paper combination. I feel like you really can't go wrong. Now for the additional stuff, accessories. And this one was again hard to narrow it down to just a, just a handful of accessories. But I picked ones that I used every day. The first one is the Blue Q zipper pouch. Go away, I'm introverting. This is me, this is me. Only this would be my dog instead of a cat. This is me. In case any of you were wondering what I look like, that's me, that's me. It's almost like any of you guys that play Dungeons and Dragons, you're going to know this reference. It's like a bag of holding. It is enormous. I just keep putting things in here. And yeah, I never seem to run out of space. This was an everyday carry for me. I think I mentioned before in one of my other videos that if it's not written down in my planner, that it's written down on a post-it note somewhere. And the post-it notes that I like to use are extra chunky. These are my favorite post-it notes. They're four by six inches and they're super sticky. These things, you can peel them up, stick them down, peel them up, stick them down about a million times before the sticky wears off. I use these on my next favorite accessory, uh, the pencil board. Um, I use these on this pencil board as I move it from day to day in my planner. It's kind of as a dashboard and I stuck these sticky notes on top of this a lot of the times on whichever side that I was not using. Because I am a very heavy handed writer. My writing is going to leave indentations on paper. This became an essential for me. Last but not least in the accessories category, the Hobonichi Translucent Sticky Notes. I used these in my planner when I wasn't sure that an actual event was going to happen and I didn't want to commit to writing it down in ink on the actual paper in the planner. I would peel one of these off, stick it on the date, and write and it took gel pen perfectly well. Now this came with a full set, but I have over time used them so often that you can refill these. You don't throw this little card out. Once you finish all the sticky notes, you can just refill that. And that's it for my favorites of 2022. What were some of your favorites? I'd love to know. I'm always looking for new things to incorporate in my planners or new things to read or watch. If you have some favorites, please share those with me. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching.